Hey, how's it going, universe? Welcome to another daily movie review. And today we're going to be talking about the recent released uh, film, The Tax Collector. Now, this is David Ayer's new film, newest film. He wrote and directed it. It stars Bobby Soto, Cynthia Carmona, Shia LaBeouf, or The Beef, as we like to call him around Zubox, um, and a bunch of other people. George Lopez is in it. That's really all of note, in my opinion. The description is a tax collector working for a local crime lord finds his family's safety compromised when the rival of his boss shows up in L.A. and upends the business. Now this caught some... Hold on a second. This caught some notoriety uh, just a couple weeks ago, maybe a couple months ago, a little like controversy where people were kind of attacking the beef, Shia LaBeouf, for taking taking this role of this kind of Latin gangster, Latin king type gangster dude. Uh, apparently he got a, a stomach tattoo for the role, which you see very, very briefly in the movie. So I'm not sure why he went to that those lengths. He just wanted to really inhabit the character of one of these Latin gangsters uh, from L.A. <laughs> and uh, the movie is, in a word, bad not a good movie it's not like the worst movie i've ever seen but it's pretty bad it's pretty uneven uh it doesn't tell its story very well or even very clearly uh, none of the characters are very interesting or dynamic uh, it feels very amateurish from top to bottom and the fact that this is like david ayer's like fifth or sixth movie he's directed uh he's been working as a writer for a long time but as a director He's been, well, he's been directing since 2005. It reminded me actually a lot of his first movie, Harsh Times, with Christian Bale. It's where he hires a white dude to be like a Latin a gangbanger. I don't know. It's really weird. It's like a weird thing that he does. I don't know what where his sensibilities come from. I think he's an L.A. guy. And um, that's just, this is just part of the world that he's either interested in or is familiar with or has family ties to. Something maybe he grew up around. I don't know. But he's always trying to kind of infuse his movies with this with this kind of thing. Even when it's not, like, appropriate. Like, you watch something like Sabotage. Which is about, like, kind of the, the serial killer SWAT movie starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. He injects this vibe into the movie regardless of whether he has actors that are appropriate for it or not. He has He's not like he's made entirely bad movies. I, I actually really liked his end of watch. I thought that was pretty novel. Not like a great movie, but it had an interesting way of making it. And had all the kind of GoPros and body cop body cams. And seemed kind of authentically captured being like a bro dude cop in L.A. And then he did Fury, which is about the World War II uh, tank battalion. These guys that like drove a tank in World War II. And that was, you know, that was okay. Stars Brad Pitt. That's where he meets the beef. The beef was in that. And it was okay, you know, like not a awful movie or I mean, not not a great movie, far from awful, uh, kind of a little bit missed the mark a little bit. But generally, if you would if you were to see Fury, you would be like, oh, I want to check out what other movies David Ayer is going to make, you know, uh, then he makes Sabotage, which was not good. He makes Suicide Squad, which was not good, but it's debatable whether that's his fault. Uh, he makes Bright, also not good. Seems like he has to kind of own that. And now there's the tax collector. And it's just a mess. It's just a mess of a movie. Uh, it feels like a lot of post-production stuff. Like maybe they shot a movie and they just didn't have a story. And they just tried to like cut it down to its barest essentials to get it released. I don't know. Like maybe it was just such a wild, untamed mess. Maybe there is supposed to be more stuff. I f you feel like there's supposed to be more stuff, especially with the characters, but I'm wondering if it just didn't play well. Either that or Air just has bad instincts. I mean, from what we can see of the script itself, like what we can see of the story and how the play plays out, it's not the, the story is not good, and the script isn't good, just on its barest essential. So I'm not just saying that adding to it would have made it better, but at least it maybe would have made it make more sense. Or some of it feel like it was authored or meaningful in some sort of way. Because um, it's just like a bad gangland melodrama for the most part. I mean, I, you couldn't even 
calling this like an action crime film would be kind of a misnomer because it's really not. It barely has any of that stuff, and the stuff that's in the movie is not very good. Uh, it's not even shot very well. Not and there's nothing dynamic about it. There's nothing uh, exciting. It doesn't feel like they're constructed in a way to kind of put you in the action even, you know, like something like this, you would think maybe, oh, well, you know, it's, it's urban crime. A lot of times there's a lot of handheld cameras and stuff like that. I didn't really, it didn't really, uh, register to me in that way. None of the stuff it just never felt substantial. I really, the movie kind of just washed over me. And to be honest with you, I almost forgot that I watched it. The only reason I, I remembered is I saw, I think somebody said something about it on Twitter. I was scrolling through Twitter right before I'm about to go to bed here. And I was like, oh, shit, I did watch that movie. I couldn't remember what it was called. for the. I just called it the, the, <laughs> the Latin Beef movie because of uh, Shia LaBeouf. But, yeah, it was that forgettable. It just dissipates from your memory almost immediately. It's like at this point you got to look at David Ayer and be like, oh, maybe you're just maybe you got lucky a couple times and you're actually not a very good director. I feel bad feeling saying that, you know, because I felt bad for him when all the the Suicide Squad stuff happened because that was just like, well, you know, he's making Suicide Squad coming off of Fury, and I had seen an End of Watch around that time. Like I saw Harsh Times and Street Kings when I was growing up, and I don't think those are great movies, but they're not like awful movies. Um. And yeah, so I was kind of on his side, I'll say. But uh, right now I got some questions. I don't know. I'm, I'm curious if it's just kind of like his place, his lot in life now because of everything that happened with Suicide Squad. And then he kind of was supposed to make Gotham City Sirens and then gets kind of pulled off of that. And then they end up making the Harley Quinn movie that came up, Birds of Prey. Um, he was so he was on that gets pulled off and he ends up doing bright which ends up not being reviewed very well a lot of people thought it was the worst movie of the year which i think is a wild overstatement but it has a lot of the same problems he's like his movies are kind of especially when he does this kind of urban crime stuff it's like so steeped in cliches um or even when he has a character that represents this represents like the latin community the tough gangster latin community is so cliche ridden i mean it's worse than shit than you would see like back in the early 2000s on something like the shield okay and i like the shield well enough it's been a long time since i watched it but i like the shield well well enough when it was out but i can't imagine a lot of that stuff is aged very well in terms of feeling kind of realistic or uh, just like you, it's, you're not gonna be able to invest in it. It's too cartoony. It's too broad. It's too like silly. I mean, maybe that's my naivete, right? Maybe that's my uh, my white privilege or something. Like I just I don't know what it's like. I I would look at these demons, these devils, these murderers, these hack artists, these guys that cut up bodies and fucking torture people. Like I would think they're silly, and then I would be in for a rude awakening. Maybe I would. I don't know. But it doesn't come off very authentic. And some of that is the casting. Like some of the people he casts, I maybe they just don't communicate it very well. Like why? Do, like I understand as an actor, like Shia LaBeouf wanting to do something like this. This is this is like this is a big, out of your comfort zone, out of the box kind of casting choice. And a lot of times that can en- end up with an interesting result. The problem here, though, his entire supporting cast is kind of ru- routinely all around kind of bad. Uh, The guy that's the co-lead, Bobby Soto, is not a good actor. And uh, I think he had some bit parts in some other David Ayer movies, maybe. Maybe that's where where he comes from. Let's look it up. No, well, he's he's relatively a new guy. But he's just not very good. He does not... He can't carry a movie. He doesn't carry the story. He's like... uh, He is like... uh, For... I don't even know what the right word is for for like a Latin dude. He's like the, the the a generic Latin handsome guy, you know. There's just nothing interesting about him, kind of innately. So when you see him, you just kind of check out. And I would say that about most of the cast. Like they're either or they feel like they're straight out of like central casting. It's just so cliche, and they're kind of like a like the bad guy in this movie. This rival gang dude is like a cartoon character. 
he never feels real or menacing. He's doing awful things. Like I said, you know, maybe it's my naivete. He's doing awful shit. Really, truly heinous things. And it all feels silly. <laughs> you never feel like invested at all. You know, I'll say when I, when the movie first started, I was like, okay, well, it's all right. The first 20 minutes, I was like, okay, the beef is doing his thing. Very watchable. But as it goes on, it just feels like it spins its wheels for an hour. And then it's like, oh, we got to end it. Then it gets very dramatic, very melodramatic in a way that just the es- the sense of escalation, the way it escalated was feel- felt like very rushed. That's why I feel like there is stuff missing from the second act. It's almost like the second, most of the second act of the movie is just gone. And it just goes from like first act, a little bit of second act. Like, so you know that there's a problem that's going to have to be addressed in the third act and that's it. Um, so it felt very rushed in that way. So yeah, I don't, I don't know. I guess it's something that David Ayer is just not a good director. I mean, I've always been meaning to go back and watch sabotage because it's got Arnold Schwarzenegger in it. It's got kind of an interesting premise. There's like a SWAT team and like there's like a SWAT team. There's somebody killing off the whole team like one by one systematically. And they're kind of shady though. They're kind of dirty. So they have to kind of deal with it themselves if memory serves me correctly. And it just, uh, it was really bad. Like I thought it was bad, bad. Just like a bad movie. And I'd always meant to go back and revisit it because I saw after I saw Sabotage, I saw End of Watch, I saw Fury. So I was like, well, maybe I misjudged. Maybe I was in the wrong headspace when I watched Sabotage. Maybe I should try to meet the movie on its terms. But now that I'm thinking about it, like I'm like, maybe I don't need to go watch Sabotage again. Because uh, everything he's done since then has felt, I felt the same way that I felt when I watched Sabotage. I'm like, this has got a weird casting choice, some weird casting choices, and it's bad. So I don't know. I guess that's that's the story of uh, how I feel about David Ayer films in general. And I feel like after this, I mean, this guy's going to be VOD director jail. I, I would be really shocked if he does anything substantial in the near future. He's announced for Bright 2 because they're going to do a sequel to Bright, apparently. Uh, that movie did very well on Netflix for however much shit it got. A lot of people watched it. So even though it cost them tons of money and it's not a good movie it's just not represented its budget well it's not a good movie but i don't know maybe someday we'll talk about bright i've always meant to go back and watch bright again a movie that i kind of just thought was bad i was like it's got some weird casting choices and it's bad <laughs> yeah and i guess yeah don't watch it don't pay for it please do not pay for it this is going to be on um, a streaming service that you probably have very shortly. I can't imagine this is going to be on a, a rental VOD thing for very long. And I'm curious if COVID made this a digital release or if it would have been put out in theaters. I mean, it shouldn't have been put in theaters, but it could have been put in theaters. It's about the quality. I would say, I honestly, it's kind of weird that this is not a Netflix movie. It's about that quality. If you've seen a lot of the Netflix like original movies or the movies they buy and like put on their service, a lot of them are really bad or mediocre. And this would get in there. I would say this is bad. Not quite mediocre. It's not like unwatchable. There is something. It ends up being kind of entertaining because of how dumb it gets. And that Shia LaBeouf casting is very odd. And it's very <laughs> some unintentionally funny awkwardness there. So maybe it's worth checking out for that at some point down the line. If you're just like a fan of just like kind of action thrillers or whatever, bad melodramas, maybe if you're just kind of that kind of movie fan that would just watch, will watch anything, try anything once, maybe then check it out. Do not watch it when you have to pay for it though. This is not worth your six bucks, four dollars, however much it costs. I can't remember. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. If you'd like to know more about Zoobox, there's some links in the description for our Facebook, for my Instagram, and my personal Twitter. Also, if you'd like to make a request for one of these daily videos or something for the big show, for Zoobox Goes to the Movies, where we do deep dive dissections-ish, deep dive-ish, deep-ish dives, 
uh, leave it in the comments and we'll throw it on the list. All right, everybody. Have a good one.